y'all it's another getting real with ashley dawn i'm ashley dawn i want to get real with you i just got some gas at the gas station that's the second gas station i've been to today the first gas station i got a whole whopping 80 cents worth of gas before the pump just turned off and then i had to go to a different gas station good stinking night probably got some pit stains going on because it is hot in florida this is getting real so i'm gonna be a real um i want to talk to you about gas not the kind in your stomach but the kind in your car so as you know gas prices are crazy it was just 50 dollars to fill up my car which is crazy um anyway gas if you are on e you're not going to go anywhere actually don what are you talking about well you have to have gas to go somewhere in your vehicle if it's a gas powered vehicle now if it's an electric vehicle that's a different story if it's a bike it's a different story you better have some strong legs um, but you need gas and when you don't have gas you can't get to where you're going sometimes in life we don't have gas and we try going somewhere that we need gas to get there and so when we don't have gas then we kind of look at our friends and ask them if they can give us a ride and they can but them giving us a ride in their car with their gas doesn't fix our problem in our car with our gas the only thing that fixes our problem in our car with our gas is us putting gas in our car where am I getting at with this well so often when we're struggling with something and maybe we don't want to deal with it maybe it's it's over our head and we don't want to deal with it we get a ride from a friend instead instead of going to the gas station instead of getting gas instead of you know walking to the gas station if that's what it takes we just ride with a friend we just kind of ride off of our friend right our friend picks us up our friend pays for the gas our friend you know drives us everywhere we just go with our friend that's codependency relying on somebody else to give you what you need outside of God. I'm talking about a flawed human being that is going to let us down, right? What about if there's one day you want to go somewhere and they don't want to go there and you've been riding with them all this time and then you throw a fit because they don't want to drive you somewhere, you know, out of the way or somewhere that they personally don't want to go. It's not their job to drive you places. They were nice enough to drive you places. They were nice enough to be there for you, but it's not their job. That's codependency. You have a codependent relationship that you are depending on somebody else to meet your needs other than God and other than yourself. How does that look in real life? Well, that looks like a friend putting all their worth and all their value in you and the time that you spend with them. And then when you're busy or when you want to spend time with somebody else, they get upset and feel like you don't love them anymore. They feel like you don't care about them anymore. Maybe if they have plans and, and you can't make it, maybe you're sick and you can't make it, then they get mad and they throw a fit because they were depending on you to be somewhere. They were depending on you to take them somewhere. So often people in our life, um, don't want to do the work themselves and so they'll see us doing the work and then they'll just kind of try to ride on our coattails and try to you know kind of go with us I can't tell you how many times when I worked in radio people would live their life through me in that they'd never invite me anywhere they'd never you know call me up but let a concert be in town let something be happening at the radio station. I was the first person that they called because they wanted tickets, they wanted meet and greets, they wanted backstage passes, they wanted whatever. Didn't hear from them for years, and then all of a sudden, they're blowing my phone up. Or it could be, you know, when I've been in commercials, and I haven't heard from people, but then they see me in a commercial, and then they call me because they think I hit it big or something, and I'm like, no, I'm just grinding. I'm just working. I'm just, you know, trying to pay my bills. I'm just trying to accomplish the things that I want in my life. I'm trying to accomplish my dreams. And they're like, oh, well, I saw you in a commercial and I thought you, you know, hit it big. Or maybe you win the lottery. You win something. And then everybody's calling you because they want to depend on you. Or maybe you're the one that plans everything all the time. I was talking to a friend last night and we were talking about um, there was a guy that I dated for like 10 11 months and we were just talking about that relationship and she was saying you know what happened with that and I said well I got tired of doing everything I got tired of planning everything I got tired of reaching out I got tired of putting in all the work 
they were depending on me to do everything and I got tired of it. I wanted to feel special. I wanted to feel like, you know, they were putting in effort, like they were putting in work. And in the beginning they were, but it kind of like trickled out. And we were just talking, you know, sometimes people see that you're capable of something and then they expect you to do it all the time. It's like a boss, right? You sign up to be insert thing here and then for one day, another employee is sick and so you pick up the slack from that job. Well, before you know it, that employee has been, you know, um, that job has been deleted and now you're doing all the extra work without extra pay because they saw that you could handle the workload because they saw that you could handle the extra pressure. When I worked in radio, I did about 12 different jobs and every time somebody was sick or somebody couldn't do something, they'd say, oh, Ashley Dawn, can you do this? And I'd say, yeah, sure. And if I didn't know how to do it, I'd learn. And before I knew it, I was doing like 12 different positions, still getting the pay that I started at at my first position. I'm doing traffic, I'm doing the continuity, I'm doing business department, I'm doing payroll, I'm doing um, receivables, and um, I'm doing all this stuff. I'm doing commercials, I'm doing on-air work, I'm doing remote work, I'm doing promotions and marketing, I'm the receptionist, I'm doing call-ins, I'm doing, I'm doing all these different things I'm the sales assistant and I'm writing up copy and I'm you know writing up invoices and I'm like okay wait a second I'm doing all these extra jobs all these positions have been you know removed I'm doing all this extra work and nobody's paying me extra just because you saw that I was capable of doing something you're depending on me to do more than I'm capable of doing right this like thing ain't holding it right um, so I keep moving it. It's not holding it right. But anyway, there are people in your life that are going to depend on you, that are going to want you to do more than you're capable of doing. It's not your job to make them happy. It's not your job to drive someone around all the time. It's not. You can bless them with it, but it's not your job. Nobody else is responsible for your life except you. Guess what? Who pays my bills? I do. Who puts gas in my car? I do. It's nobody else's job to fulfill my life. I go to God. And what God isn't going to do, he's going to empower me to do. Because he doesn't expect me to be lazy and just depend on him for everything. He, he doesn't do that. He expects me to use the brain that he's given me, to use the hands that he's given me, to use the, the giftings and the capabilities that he's given me to carry out his plans for me. He expects that of me because it's my life. I reap the benefits of my life. So therefore I need to put the work in, right? Somebody else don't get paid when you go to work. Well, unless it's the owner of the company and they kind of do, but I'm saying your employees that are doing the same job as you, they don't get your paycheck. You do. Well, how do you get your paycheck when you work? Same thing with your life. You want to see blessings in your life, put in the work. You want to see good things in your life, put in the work, be disciplined. You cannot depend on other people to fill your gas tank up. Maybe, you know, you're sad and you're like, oh, I wish I'm looking at all these other people and they're so happy and I wish I was happy. Well, do the work to make yourself happy. Stop looking at everybody else thinking that they're going to fix it, thinking that they're going to do it, thinking that, you know, they're going to make everything better. It's not their stinking job to make everything better. It's not their stinking job to fix your life or to fix the problems in your life. That's not their job. You are being codependent and you are putting pressure on somebody else that they are not meant to carry. You are putting a backpack of weight on somebody that didn't ask for it. Your life is yours. You are in control of your life. Your choices will reflect the outcome of your life. I saw a post on Facebook the other day and they're like, okay, you had a bad childhood. Well, well, now you're an adult. You're not a child anymore. Like, do the work. Go to counseling. Figure it out. I didn't have a perfect childhood either. I had a loving mom and a loving dad and they poured themselves out to me. But they were imperfect people too. They were honest about their imperfections, but they were imperfect. I didn't have a perfect childhood. There are things that as a 34-year-old woman, I am still working on. I have went through tons of counseling. And guess what? I'm still doing it. And I'm putting in the work. 
I don't blame my problems on my mom or dad. They got problems of their own. I'm not going to blame anybody for my life or my choices. It's my life. It's my choices. If my car is on empty, if I run out of gas on the side of the road, it's not my mom's fault. It's not my dad's fault. It's not my friend's fault. It's not my boyfriend's fault, which I don't have one. But it's not nobody's fault except mine. This is my car. It's registered in my name. My driver's license has my name on it. It's my job to put gas in it. It's my job to get the oil changed. It's my job to put air in the tires. It's my job to keep up with it. It's my job to clean it up. It's my car. If I run out of gas, it's my fault. I cannot depend on anybody else for gas. Say it's a gas station and I always go to the same gas station, which I do, and they don't have gas. Well, then what? Then I'm just going to be out of gas because I only go to that gas station, right? If you put all your hope and all your trust and everything in a person, a flawed person, and they let you down. No. I know people are flawed. I myself am flawed. I got a shirt on. It says, leave the judging to Jesus. Leave the judging to Jesus. Jesus is the only perfect person. He is the only one capable of handling all your crap. Nobody else can. You can look around all day long. I'm sitting in the church parking lot. You can look around at the church all day long. And guess what? You're going to be sitting in a church full of sinners. Because we are all sinners. We have all fallen short of the glory of God. We are not perfect. We all are jacked up. That's why we need Jesus. We're driving cars that we need gas for. And the only person that can give us the good gas is Jesus. How do I have the confidence to do what I do to get on these videos, to, to go places by myself? Jesus. Because my identity is in Jesus. It's not in people. It's not in my relationship with people. It's not in a relationship with a guy. It's not in a relationship with my friends. It's not in a relationship at work. It's not in the way that I look. It's not in the clothes that I wear or how my hair looks. My identity is in Jesus. I get my entire being from Jesus and who Jesus is. Yeah, people are going to let me down. Jesus ain't. If I expect him to do everything I want him to do, he might. But that's not really him. That's me. That's my expectations of him. Which, if they don't align with the word of God, are wrong. Do you see what I mean, though? So often, we're, we're driving around on E, you know, and we put... Like, for instance, I went to the first gas station. I was like, okay, I'm going to get gas. And I got to the gas pump and I put the... the thingy in the, the hole and I'm trying to pump gas and I'm like wait a second this ain't working why ain't this working right I could have got mad I could have cussed I could have done all kinds of stuff but I just realized this gas station is out of gas my identity isn't in this gas station so I'm gonna close up my little lid and I'm gonna go to a different gas station sometimes you put all your hope and all your trust in, in these people and then you realize there ain't no gas in them people and then you get let down. Well, if that person isn't going to Jesus for their identity, how can you be going to them for yours? Even if you're in a marriage, you can't go to your husband for your identity. You can't go to your husband. He's going to have a bad day. He's going to let you down. He's not perfect. You have to go to Jesus. And if you got junk, clean it up. Fix it. Don't be drive, riding in somebody else's car all the time. Put gas in your own. Take care of your own life. I have to sometimes remind myself, you know, because it's very easy for me to give advice to other people. And I have to remind myself, like, actually don't take your own advice. Most of these videos, I watch them before I post them. And it's not for anybody but my own self. Like, God is using me to speak to me. And hopefully, you know, like a waterfall, it's flowing on everybody else that wants to hear I got some junk in my life and God's working on it. I've said from when I was a little girl, my life is a construction site and hard hats are necessary. You cannot be in my life and not wear a hard hat because you might be offended. God's going to call me to do things and to not do things and you might be offended by that. Guess what? I don't care. I really don't care. One day I'm going to die. And when I stand before God and he asks me what I did with my life, you're not going to be there. It's just going to be me and God. And based on my choices, based on the things I have or have not done, I'm either going to go to heaven or go to hell. And that's my choice. He gives us free will. He's a gentleman. 
I don't want my choices to lead me to a lot a eternity in hell. So guess what? I'm going to do the work to fix my choices. You can do whatever you want. You have free will. You can go to hell. You can go to heaven. It's your choice. But don't look at me or anybody else to be your identity. Don't look at a person, a flawed, imperfect, broken person, and put all your worth and put all your stock in them and worship them. The only one worthy of being worshipped and praised is Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit because they're all three in one. But you know what I mean? So often we put our worth in other people and so often we're trying to get other people to drive us around because we don't want to fix our own car. We don't want to put gas in our own car. Fix your own car. Put gas in your own car. Drive yourself. Stop relying on, on other people for your happiness. Stop relying on other people for your life to be the way that you want it to be. You want to make more money? Go get a new job. You want to be happier? Remove the stress in your life. You got toxic friends? Get rid of them. You got toxic family members? Get rid of them. Let them know that you've drawn boundaries and they're not allowed to cross them anymore. Your life is a result of your choices. What do your choices say? You can't blame anybody. It's not their job to make you happy. It's not their job to fix your life. It's your job. You fix your life. You put the gas in your car. You clean your own house. Or you pay somebody to do it. But you're still paying for it. So much we want to put everything on everybody else and expect them to fix all our problems. They're not our savior. Jesus is. And Jesus saved our soul, but he requires us to live it out. He requires us to do some work too. He requires us to put on our work boots and not just sit on the couch and be lazy. I just want to encourage you. If, you, if there's something in your life that you don't like, you have the power to fix it. You do. It's your life. Your choices. There are things in my life that I don't like if I'm being real. And guess what? I'm doing the work to fix it. And every day for the past 34 years, give or take some, when I was a baby, I've been doing the work. So if you look at my life and you're like, wow, Ashley Dawn, your life looks so perfect. Your life looks so beautiful. First of all, it's definitely not perfect. Secondly, it is beautiful. I've done the work and I'm continuing to do the work. And so if you see something in my life and you are envious of it, well, maybe you should do what I've done to get it. Maybe you should get out there and you should work. Maybe you should go to counseling and get healing. It's a hard word, but it's a needed word. If you see something in somebody else that you want, ask them how they got it and then do the work to get it for yourself. People ask me all the time, where'd you get that? Where'd you get that? And I tell them, well, guess what? They got to go to the store and buy it because I'm not going to give them mine. I'm not. I, I worked for this. I worked for the money to buy this shirt. I'm not giving it to you. If you want to know where I got it, I'll tell you. Ruby's Rubbish. I think it's rubiesrubbish.com. And you can go buy yourself one. You can work and then you can get that money and you can go buy yourself one. But I'm not taking care of you. That's not my job. My job is to take care of myself. And to encourage you to take care of yourself. So that's what I'm here to do. <laughs> I love you. More importantly, God loves you. You are seen. You are celebrated. And you are loved. But your life is a result of your choices. If you're unhappy with something, fix it. I hope you have a great day. I hope you know that God has good things for you. Jeremiah 29, 11, God has a future for you, but he's going to require you to work for it. He's going to require you to do something. He's not just going to hand it to you. Okay. Huh. I love you. I hope you still love me. If you don't, that's fine because God does, but I will catch you in the next one. And if you're not subscribed, subscribe, hit the little bell so you'll be alerted to my new videos. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and beyond. I have a TikTok as well. Um, I think I have a Snapchat too, but I'm never on it. Anyway, follow me. I would love to connect with you if you want to send me a message, a direct message, or an email, or um, something. I would love to connect with you. I'd love to hear your story. That's it. Love y'all. Catch you in the next one.